Everybody, welcome back to the show for our third stream in two days. Uh, a lot of things going on. So uh, we had a lot of things to cover. So let's just jump right in. Now, of course, as the thumbnail and title suggests, we've got some pretty good news today. The SEC doesn't plan to appeal the court decision on the grayscale. But what does that actually mean? And how big is that for our market? I think it's pretty big. And then we're going to talk about the chances of a spot ETF. And of course, the raging bet that we have going on. Speaking of bets, for the last two weeks, we've been talking about doing a sweat giveaway. And it was 100,000 sweat coins plus 10 NFTs. That'll be 5,000 per person. So the 20 winners there. And then the NFTs also will be 10 winners. And we put this out two weeks ago. And of course, today is the day we're actually going to draw those. So we're going to draw those winners first because I know when I used to go through these things, people would say, wait till the very end, till the drawing. I'm like, man, you jerk. So let's just get this done. And I will just say this as a quick recap. I want to thank everybody who has entered. So far, we have over 1,000 applicants. Uh, and this was from, from a tweet. And the big thing for me was just taking a look at what this actually means. Now, you guys know I've been talking about Sweat for about a year now. And I've heavily invested into it. So you know that I'm super biased, like everything I talk about on this channel. But what's great about it is because since it's a free, free app and you get to walk and you get to actually push yourself, I'm appreciating these comments uh, from people who have been using it uh, to the great extent. Like Nicholas says, post lockdown, I put on quite a bit of weight, but low emotionally. Sweat app was a lifesaver, especially in the early days. Thanks so much. And then Yassine, I weighed 108 kilos, and now I'm down to 87 kilos. And there's a ton of them. And you can find that, of course, on News Asset for, uh, on, on the Twitter account. So I like this app. It works. It's free. And I think it's actually great. And also, if I don't know what your situation is, but demographic-wise, I know I've got uh, roughly 90% males, 10% females, and we're in the average age of 35 to 55 years old. If you put on some weight, I think Sweatcoin's a great option. And of course, just walking, you don't have to do fit training. You can watch any of these videos and I'll talk about just how great walking can actually be. I do it every day with my dog. I think that's why I've been the same weight since I've pretty much been in college. But again, with Sweatcoin, you can download it right now. There's a link in the description. It is free. It's the number one uh, health app globally, between number one and five, depending on which, which, which section of the world you're at. So, you know, people will say, well, Rob, it's number four in Turkey, whatever, one through five. And of course, it's got 140 million users all the way through. And again, I'm super biased. I bought this in a seed round on June 23rd. And people will say, well, Rob, aren't you going to dump on me? Well, I bought it for a penny and a half. And right now it's worth less than a penny. So I don't think I'm going to do that. And then of course, people will say, ah, but it's, you know, this, the, the sweat coin, the tokenomics, and then there's going to be a dumping and da, da, da. I'm like, you know what? We don't have any dumping or set a send out or uh, unlocking schedule until 2024. We've already passed the one in 2023. And of course, most of that is the ecosystem and community and the treasury for which, of course, all the staking actually happens. And look, on top of that, I know people will say, but, you know, the tokenomics are awful and there's just so much. There's just so much uh, supply versus, versus the actual demand. Well, yeah, over the last seven years, all the different tokens that were built up from this being a Web2 app, there was a ton of tokens that were there. And during that token generation event, which was done flawlessly by the near protocol, I might add, uh, there was a ton of supply. Now, as time has gone on in September, this is the first month that demand or supply, or there's more demand than supply. And of course, as we extrapolate that out, this is where they think it's actually going to go because of people actually using it. So how does this actually work? Obviously, Sweat is a free app. Nothing's for free. Just like right now you're watching YouTube. Do you think YouTube's free? No, you're probably watching an ad to come in here. So when you go into the Sweat app, there might be some ads right, right around. Sweat's a top 10 Web3 app, top 15 asked by the level, level of user activity. And I always take a look at that and like, let's verify that. There's a website called DAP Radar. Here's the top 10 uh, dApps that are out there. Uh, based on just all chains. And if we take a look at the unique active wallet, wallets, you got PancakeSwap and TinyTap and Galax, which is a social media platform, I believe. And there's Sweat, there's Sweatcoin, roughly 671,000 unique active wallets over a 30-day period. You can break this down by seven days. You can break it down by 24 hours if you really wanted to, but Sweats, it only goes up. Uh, it's around number five or seven, something like that. And then, of course, on top of that, if we, let me go back. If we take a look, Sweat, this is, why is the token, why do I think it's gonna be do so well? So Sweat, earn, you can earn Sweat by walking. When I talked about it before, it was a thousand steps for one Sweat, now it's 4,500. You can transfer, store, and trade for popular cryptos on the wallet, which will be released to American customers. Uh, 
and on the 17th, or use their participate in community votes, play games, yield and unlocking rewards. So what I wanted to show you was this. They, t they teamed up with Orderly, so you're gonna be able to use the sweat tokens that you use, that you've walked and actually earned, to buy other type of crypto. Near, looks like you can find Ethereum, maybe like a little Euro down there, I'm not for sure. I'm gonna have Orderly on the, on the uh, uh, show pretty soon. They'll, they'll get us all the information. But again, you can do all these things in the app, learn and earn, you can earn the different uh, tokens. There's different things you can buy on there uh, for all the sweat that you've, you've earned. And of course, there's also staking. And then of course, uh, let's see, let's go down here. This is the actual game, which I think it's a, it's a goofy little game, but I mean, people play and they earn sweat, so why not? So that is sweat in a nutshell in under four minutes. Now let's bring on David Ashton from Sweat Economy. And he's going to draw the winners. So, David, welcome to the show. Thanks for doing this, man. Right? Thanks for working on a Saturday. Let's get these people uh, some tokens and some NFTs. Of course, yeah. That was one of the best introductions to Sweat Economy I've heard in a long time. So, thank you very much for that. Uh, very excited for all the different features coming up and a lot more releases for the U.S. launch as well in just three more days. Yeah. Well, great. So, let's get uh, fantastic. So, let's get the sweat in the hands of people. So, real quick. All the different uh, tweets, and you guys had to fill out a form. There was over a thousand different applicants, and here they all are. David has them. These are usernames for the for the sweat uh, wallet. David, how are we going to do this? How are we going to randomize this so people don't say Rob's cheating, and he's just given to his twenty friends, which I don't even have twenty friends. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a great question, and actually one that we've had to deal with within Sweat Economy. If anyone uses the Sweat Wallet app actively. Uh, you'll know that we have a sort of rewards prize draw system in the app. And we've had a lot of comments in the community saying, you know, you're fake in the entries. You're just giving it to employees and friends. Sure. We're not. Uh, you know, this is proof for it. Uh, what we actually do, we load them all up into a Google Sheet or an Excel or something, you know, along these lines. And we use random.org, which is a complete randomizer. And we have a premium subscription to make sure that it's on an atmospheric noise level, meaning there's not even like, computer yeah. randomization issues or anything like that okay so it's a very interesting process uh, for anyone who digs into the data side it's pretty cool um, and we actually live stream and record all of the prize draws that we give away in app as well to make sure that you can verify those sweet let's do it yeah so like rob mentioned we have all of the entries here there was around 1200 entries total but after verifying the entries, getting rid of duplicates, that type of thing, we've ended up with 963, okay. uh, which is an awesome number. Thank you to everyone who signed up there. And what we do then, you know, it's a check sort of uh, sheet here to make sure that there's no duplicates. You guys, anyone who knows formulas, you can check this as well. I'll send over the link to Rob so you can actually open the sheet yourselves. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, and again, winning indices. So what we do with random.org, we just draw a random indices. We'll draw 30 today for the 5,000 sweat giveaway. Um, and we'll have 20 winners with 10 backups in case there's any issues, of course. Mm -hmm. And we just input it here. It matches them and it gives us the winning sweat coin uh, usernames, which is pretty cool. So if you don't mind, I can jump straight in and draw our first 20 winners. Bam, do it. Awesome. So random.org, I'd like to just do a quick run through of the settings to make sure that everybody understands. So we're asking for 30 random integers. Again, 20 winners, 10 backups. Between the rows that we have, of course, we have like the title role and things. So we start at row two. Mm -hmm. um, unique integers like raffle tickets drawn from a hat. It's in a trail. So again, you guys can actually verify that we used random.org and we're not like doing a screen recording or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll put the links down. And as a bare bones text document just means I can copy and paste it easily and a brand new randomization. We press this magical button, get numbers, <laughs> copy that, head over to winning indices and paste it values only and all of these indices here correlate to rows in this first participants sort of sheet we head over to winners and these one two three four five six ten twenty winners are our winners of the five thousand sweat coins hey david real quick can you just read them off just a couple or as many yeah. as you can so I'll, who's, who's I'll read winners? out the 20 yeah so okay. we have andy phillips 007 mr uh -huh. bond there 
Biofish, Crin. I'm going to pronounce these very badly. No, no, no. Apologize. Yeah, pronounce them as good as I pronounce all the names I do. That's fine. Chris Vincenetti, mm -hmm. uh, Dreislander, Fatih KRL, Howard Carlson, Mahabuba, uh, Miguel. I'm just going to you know, roll them off. Paru, Adis Cowan, Augustine, Ahmed, Ahmed, Anderson, Antonio, Ayman, okay. Christopher, Kriptenzo. Uh, I'm, yeah, there's a, a couple more for Reed. El Karu Minas. Nailed it. I'll try them, but yes, that's our 20. Okay. So that's our, that's our, so in relation to the 20 winners, you'll be receiving uh, 5,000 sweat coins. And of course, right now, it's, it's not that much, but uh, who knows? Maybe in uh, time, it goes up to a nickel, then a dime, and then a dollar. I have no idea. But uh, that's what we got for that part. Now let's do, can we do the NFTs? Yeah, awesome. So it's the exact same setup. I'm not going to run through it again, yep. but all the same usernames, everything's the same. And we have random.org. And just to show you that it's empty, so we're not pre-filling anything. So we're on the winning indices tab. We come here, 15. So we have 10 winners of the Epic NFTs, but we're choosing five backups, again, just in case anything goes wrong. Sure. Between the same amount of rows, everything's all good in the trail. And we press good old get numbers. So we come back here and we paste them with the values only and we match them. So I think we have a double winner there of Biofish, maybe. Well, then the number 11 wins one too then. Perfect. <laughs> so Biofish, Davy Loves Gravy, Raj, Wadasid, uh, Anderson, Clayton, Saja, Edric, Felix, Mihail, uh, Moses, Okimov, Ronald, Superfly, and you okay? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, everybody. So those will be dropped right into your your. As I assume, this is going to be in their their sweat wallet. Absolutely. Which, uh, and then uh, that'll be that'll happen on this roughly around the seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth. When are we looking at? So with the sweat coins, we'll be air dropping them either today, tomorrow, or Monday. So you'll receive oh, okay. them before the launch date. With the NFTs, it's an upcoming feature for the Epic NFTs, but as soon as they're released, you will be seeing them in your Sweat Wallet application for the Sweat Hero game. Fantastic. David, get out of here. I appreciate you coming on a Saturday and working here. You deserve a raise. Thanks so much. And uh, everybody, congratulations to the winners. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. See you guys. Or see you, David. All right. So that was that. Now let's get into the good stuff, which not David's sheet. Here we go. So... The SEC looks like they take another another L for Gary Genzer. I have got nothing against Gary Genzer. I just think that uh, he's uh, going a little bit crazy uh, with the spot ETF, and maybe it happens. So the question that everybody's is saying is like, well, now that this this was uh, overturned, or not overturned, the the SEC decided not to appeal the original decision from August from Grayscale. Does that mean we get a spot ETF? No. Here's what happens. The District of Columbia Court of Appeals in Washington in August, in August ruled that the SEC was wrong to reject the Grayscale's proposed Bitcoin ETF. Remember, they're trying to uh, take their, their ETF that they have, or excuse me, their financial matter for, for Bitcoin in Grayscale and try to roll that over to a spot ETF. And the SEC said, no, you're, we cannot let you do that. And of course, they sued them, which they should have done a while ago. I think everybody should be suing the SEC, it seems like, because they're wrong. And uh, they lost that case. So the SEC decision not to appeal, because they had until midnight last light to appeal, likely paves the way for the agency to review Grayscale's application. So it's not like we're going to get a spot ETF today. It's just they say, okay, well, um, you can move that from Grayscale to a spot ETF. However, we have to approve that spot ETF. So there's just one more hurdle to jump, which is a big hurdle. Grayscale sued the SEC, arguing that because the agency pr previously approved certain surveillance agreements to prevent fraud and Bitcoin features-based ETFs, the same setup should be satisfactory for Grayscale's spot ETF, since both spot and future funds rely on Bitcoin's price. The appeals court ruled the SEC arbitrarily denied Grayscale's app because it never explained why the two arrangements were materially different. And I don't understand it either. I don't understand why they say that, okay, we're going to approve the, spot e or the uh, futures ETF 
because there's very little fraud and manipulation, but we can't do the spot ETF because there's too much fraud and manipulation. I think it's a lot easier to do manipulation on a product that where you don't have to hold the underlying asset. And that's the whole thing with a futures ETF. You don't have to hold, you can, you can hold paper Bitcoin, but for a spot ETF, as I understand it, you have to hold the underlying asset. So they have to buy it up. The appeals court ruled the SEC arbitrarily denies grayscale application. Oh, I said this. And then the appeals court is expected to issue a mandate specifying how its decision should be executed, which will likely include instructing the SEC to revisit Grayscale's application. So there is that part, and uh, that's a win. Gary has to take yet another L on top of uh, the loss they took from uh, rape from Ripple, <laughs> which was a good one. And now we get to the point of well, what does this mean for the spot ETF? Because everybody wants it to happen. I want it to happen. I don't think it is. But again, like I said before, just because I think it's not going to happen doesn't mean it will. I don't have a crystal ball. I'd rather be right and rich than wrong and poor. And Eric Balchunas nailed it. Uh, ETF analyst for Bloomberg. And he put out a statement which states that this, at Bloomberg, we believe there's a 90% chance of approval by ARC's January 10th deadline. But he's also saying that because of this, of what happened, it's now a 90% chance that the spot ETF will be approved. Now, I don't know if he said at what time point. I don't believe it's gonna happen before 2024, but from whatever he says, it looks like it's going to be a 90% chance of approval. We'll see if it actually happens. And then you sometimes have to take a look at, and a step back at the big money and what they're doing. And because of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, I'm losing my words, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, that's what they're trying to, to change over to a spot ETF. When the news broke, or as the news was coming in, there's a discount for the trust itself, and it's closing. So the discount was at negative 48%. In, in 2022, towards the end of the, of the year, which of course, that was the time when we had some of the all-time lows, as you might remember, I think it was November 17th or November 9th, 2022, we had all-time lows for Bitcoin, roughly around $15,700. And now as time has gone on, it's decreased that discount for the trust because people believe that this will be turned into a Bitcoin spot ETF. And now, of course, the numbers of 90% running around, people are like, this is a sure thing. This is definitely going to happen. I will just warn everybody that whenever we think that it's definitely going to happen, it's like the market turns around and slaps us right in the face and says, no, I will do whatever I want to do. However, I think this is very positive moving forward. And uh, I like what I see. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And now that we've heard some, some good news, let's balance it out. Let's balance it out with, I don't know if this is bad, but let's just call it the reality. The possibility of a recession on the horizon. There was a, there was a good video and it was with, um, it was on Dave Lynn's channel. And he talked to Gareth Salloway and Gareth Salloway talked about how, that he believes that there is a multi-year recession coming and uh, it's gonna be havoc for the markets. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I will say, if we take a look at treasury yield spreads, and I'm going to talk about if we do have a multi-year recession, how, what historically has actually happened. But one of the greatest indicators, the best indicators for a recession is the treasury yield spreads. And of course, I'm using Ben's website. And we can see here, as far as a spread goes, let me reset this zoom. It's becoming for me. Every time, or almost every time, the treasury yields, and we're taking a look at the, at the 10 and three months. You can look at the 10 and two year. It doesn't, doesn't matter. This one, I think, is a little bit more, a little more stable and accurate of predicting. Once the, the treasury yield inverts and then it uninverts, there's a little bit of a time before we hit a recession, which is in the gray part. This happened in 2001. It, in, it inverted, uninverts. Happened in 07, 08, before the Great Recession. And it happened, which I thought was interesting. It inverted and uninverted in 2019, in 2020, when we had the Cerveza sickness. <laughs> and then of course, 
it inverts and now it's somewhat uninverting, but it hasn't got to that, that point to where it comes out over. So we know a recession's probably coming if we take a look going all the way back to the 70s. Usually that's what happens. So why is this a really good, good indicator? And it was explained very well by George Gammon. And he took a look at some people that are in the know, <clears throat> people not like us, let's just be honest, like a Paul Tudor Jones, and how Paul Tudor Jones stood up at Davos before the Cerveza virus came in and pretty much gave, rallied off or stated a ton of facts about this coronavirus. This was like, I want to say seven or eight months before the coronavirus actually hit. So the thesis is, and I think it is very well, is that the people that are higher up in society, we'd say, who have a lot of contacts with sitting, I don't know, individuals, representatives, people in power, uh, they get a lot of insider information that we don't get. And because of that, what happens is they take their money out of stocks because they know it's going to tank and they put in things like treasuries. And that's exactly what we see. And then, so because of that, I think that's why we have the treasury yields going up so high because I think people have some insider information. They know what's happening. Now, not everybody knows what's happening, but I think it's a great indicator. And I got to tell you, I didn't really put too much stock into it until I watched that video. And then also I figured out just how much money there is in bonds and T-bills, treasuries, notes. It's like $50 billion, excuse me, sorry, $50 trillion in the U.S., and globally over $110 trillion. And this was, it's a US bond market debt versus the US stock market cap. And it only goes to 2012, but I'll show you some other data. So in blue here is the stock market. And then red is the bonds, T-bills, everything, right? And even back in the day, that 60-40 split, people would talk about, you know, 60% in stock and 40% in bonds. It worked out pretty well because the rates were higher. Then of course, as time went on, rates slumped off and people got it more into stocks and now it's coming back. And if we can take a look here globally, US has $51.3 trillion in the, bonds, in the bond market and China has 20 trillion. So you add this all up, it's over, a, it's actually a hundred, excuse me, it's $133 trillion of people just sticking it into these bonds because either they know something or it's a pretty much a uh, super easy reward to do. So when I see this, I think to myself, man, there's a, there's a pretty good chance we could have, you know, a, uh, quite a bit of a slump in as far as a recession. But anyhow, looking at this, you gotta ask yourself, well, if there's $133 trillion in bonds globally, what does that mean for the stock market? Stock market globally, as of 2022, excuse me, April 2020, was roughly 90 trillion. Now I think it's over like 110 or something like that. But it's amazing to me that the bond market is just that fantastically enormous. And then of course, if we take a look at, because uh, people are always concerned about uh, the Fed assets and how much they're actually taking off, off the books, because we're doing, first it was quantitative easing, now it's quantitative tightening. You know, they took off, they went here from, $8.9 trillion to now to 7.9. So the, the Fed's doing its job. It's taken off, getting excess liquidity off the books for them as they're auctioning it off. And then the Fed's been rolling off $100 billion in treasury. But the question is, can they? is this fast enough for them to avoid a recession? I'm not for sure, but it looks like we're headed there. And I will just put it like this. The whole point of this whole exercise, which I was rambling on a little bit too much, Gareth Salloway and, and uh, Dave Lynn, when they talked about it, you know, a multi-year recession, people get freaked out about that. They say, this is awful. But remember, recessions last an average of 10 months. I know some people will say, but, but Rob, it seems like recessions get longer because look at 2007, 2009, that was 18 months. That was a great recession. That was one of the worst ones out there. And, but of course, the last one was only two months, February 2020 to April 2020. And we can go back and forth on this, but the big thing I want to say is, we can just take a look at the M2, this is M2 money supply in the stock market. I just want to show you something. 
The stock market is not the economy. The thing that I will, I'll mention is that even though this is what the Great Recession sh showed us, the stock market can bottom out, but it recovers before the recession ends. The same thing happened over here. It recovers before the recession ends. So I know like you may, some people might hear this and say, oh, the recession, that's awful. But even if it does last for two years and we hit it in Q1, what does that mean? That takes us into 2025? Yeah, 2025. And the market recovers. The economy might not recover in that time frame. But it's one of those things to think about is say, well, even if the economy doesn't recover, if the stock market recovers, that could be pretty good for me. Now, I'm not talking about the jobs and things like that, but for the markets themselves, could be quite positive. And then lastly, I was trying to put a positive spin. Here's the last positive spin so everybody can have a feel-good moment. Uh, we're not going to get Lambos, but Ferrari's going to accept crypto as payment for its cars in the U.S. So <laughs> I, uh, I'm not big into cars, but I know people were all uh, excited about this one, especially if they said, well, this is great that Ferrari can do this, maybe Tesla can do this at some point. Maybe they're right, not far behind. So Ferrari started to accept payments in crypto for its luxury sports cars in the U.S. and will extend the, the scheme to Europe following requests from its wealthy customers. Again, we're taking a look at adoption. I think that's a pretty good indicator. Is massively famous car companies starting to accept cryptocurrency and digital assets for its payment. And that's it for today. So look, that went a little bit long. I apologize. Usually we try to get things done a little bit quicker. Today's uh, Saturday, so... Not as not on top of our game as usually we are, but like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one.